Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about how to think about developing a model or an algorithm in Python. And really, it's regardless of Python, here's a, a methodology for creating a model. So, uh, start out with we really need to understand the math. And today, the problem I've asked you in your assignment is really a crossover between the infection rates in China and Italy for uh, the coronavirus. And so, we're going to make some assumptions. And then we're going to test when the Italian growth rates are higher than the China growth rates. When will China, Italy catch up with China? And this is a form of equation for uh, it's a standard kind of formula for compound interest rates. So rather than compounding money, we're going to compound infection rates. So can we come up with some intuition that we know that we can approximate the solution and we feel good about the methodology that we're choosing? Kind of the second step, and then can we visualize this to kind of prove it to ourselves graphically? And then finally, better yet, can we come up with an analytical solution to validate the model? And then finally, once we're sure that our model works, before we ever start to code, sit down and code, can we create a flowchart and pseudocode to implement the solution? So I, I recommend going through these steps before you sit down to code your problem. All right, so uh, let's talk about the math. And uh, what, as I've stated, this is a a uh, common set of problems that for compound interest, but we're going to not compound dollars, we're going to com compound infection rates. So the general formula is the future value is equal to the principal times one plus the interest rate to the, to the time that is being compounded. So I've just adopted that equation into our infection rate uh, model. So how do we think about this intuitively? So uh, if we have a very high infection rate of 30%, 0 0.30, and we start out with a P of, let's say, it's just the simplest thing that we can do, P equals to 1, and then in one day, we would expect that a 30% growth rate, we would get 1.30, and two days would be 1.3 uh, times 1.3, which would be 1.69, and then in three days, we'd roughly get about 2.2. So just without any kind of coding or anything, I know that in three days, with a growth rate of 30% a day, that we're, we should double in about three days. So I went into IPython and I coded that up uh, with the IPython console, started with a P of one, and then here's my interest rate, and then here is three days. So we can see that we're getting in three days, we're getting about 2.2 is exactly what our intuition is, is telling us. And as a, kind of a quick thought also is if we, if, if the growth rate was 10%, approximately, let's say nine to 10 days, we can kind of know that on the, off the top of the head, our heads that that would double the number. So Italy's doubling every three days, where China's doubling about every 10 days. So Italy should eventually catch up on the China infection growth rates. So I'm going to stop there and then uh, tell you a little bit of, give you some just uh, thoughts to consider just in your general life is these types of doubling rates come up all the time. And I wanted to give you a little example here called the rule of 72, which is a quick way to calculate doubling rates. So this is often done in real estate. When you go to buy a house someday, you can think of me uh, because you can, you can calculate basically what your mortgage is on a monthly basis very quickly by using this rule of 72. Also, it's used by a lot of investors, Warren Buffett included, who can do these kind of calculations in his head. So the question is, is how many years until your money doubles if you're, you're getting 12% interest rate? So the rule of thumb here is that you take uh, 72 divided by the interest rate 12, and that will tell you the number of years that will until the doubling rate. So if we have 12% interest rate, we divide that into 72, and we know off the top of our heads that our, our dollars, if we had $1,000, we would go to $2,000 in approximately six years. So over a 30-year period, you'll have several uh, doublings of your money, um, basically four to five times your money if you put in the $10,000. So it's a way to quickly approximate what... Uh, what your doubling rate is given an interest rate. So the rule of 72. All right, so back to what we're discussing for our model is if I need 
the answer in hours. How do I get hours? Because I, I did something tricky. I gave you the growth rate in days, but we need to know when the crossover rate is in time is in hours. So how do we do that? So here's our general formula. And so T uh, is the compound time rate, which is compounding, compounding, not the rate, but the duration. So if we divide, and I gave it to you in days, so I gave in one day, we used T in the past, so we went from 1 to 1 1.3. Well, what would it be if, uh, if it was hours? Okay, so if I divided T by 24, that would give me an hourly rate for the infection rate growth. So, so let's just quickly kind of do something on in IPython to tell us if that makes sense. So what I did here is I just took the 24, whoops, 24 divided by 24, which gives us 1, and that gives us 1.3, which we would expect. Now, if I divided uh, 1 by 24, which would give us the hourly rate, what would we get? We're getting an output of 1.01, which is 1% growth in one hour. That, that's, that's really kind of amazing. If you have a 30% growth rate per day, you get a 1% growth per hour. And that kind of makes sense because we're compounding at that rate for 24 hours and it gets us to 30%. So that kind of in, intuitively makes sense. So if we take this one step further, if I have 72 hours, which is equal to three days, then we're back to our, to our principal growing to two, uh, which is the doubling rate. Uh, in three days. So that's about, excuse me, about two days that we double. And so that, that makes sense. Um, excuse me, three days. So we, we double in three days. So intuitively that all makes sense. We're on the right track. So another way to think about this is if we drew a picture and graphically described what's going on, we would think of it this way. So this is uh, on the y-axis I have my infection rates, this is the number of infected. Number of infected. And we know that China, we had uh, at 30,000, and then Italy was at 10,000. And China had a growth rate of 10%, and China had a growth rate of 30%. So let's see if we can graphically kind of show that. So here, Let's assume that this is China and it has kind of a slower growth rate and it does this. So this is our uh, 30,000 number. This is 30,000. And then down here, so we've got approximately about, uh, um, actually this was supposed to be 1,000. So Actually, I got both numbers wrong. So it's China was at 10,000, Italy was at 1,000. And so China is at 10,000 here, Italy is at 1,000, but it has a faster growth rate. So there's going to be some crossover here. And then the question is how many hours that it takes. Now, we knew that um, if at this 30% growth rate, so this is our 30% growth rate, and this is our 10% growth rate, and this is China, and this is Italy. And we knew that every, every three days we got a doubling. So if this is t equals 0, 72 hours, we got to a doubling here, about here. And so we could kind of uh, anticipate, so okay, if we went to 20,000 there, 30,000 would be in another three days. So that's 144. So we know that this thing is not to scale, but we know that it's, intuitively it's going to be probably more than a couple hundred hours so that's that's what our intu intuition is telling now this is growing at the same rate so, or at a different rate but a slower rate so we should catch up with the china number so i'm i'm guessing in my head that it's probably over to a couple hundred hours so let's go to to think about this even more in depth could we solve this problem analytically and I think if I gave this problem to you as an SAT question, you probably would have solved it. So I'm going to look at the Italy numbers. Now notice in my code, I often do this. I use an underscore because once you get to a huge set of numbers in, in your Python code, you don't have any commas. So when you get all these zeros, what I like to do is just, and this is legal Python code, is use an underscore for, for a comma. So if we were to set up this problem to solve for X, how would we do that? We would take... Our Italy number is 1,000 
plus our growth rate, 1 plus 0 0.30 to some exponent. And let's take this to x to the 24th. And then we would set that equal to the China initial number to 1 plus 0 0.10 to some, to, to really it's the same time, right? We're trying to understand when they're going to cross over. So this becomes the equation that we solve for. And, uh, and I've written this out here. Bottom line, the trick is to use a log function. If you take the log, we can bring the exponents down and then we can solve this qu equation and x turns out to be around 331 hours. So um, now we, we really have a good idea of how, what our model should finally look like. So this is not to scale again. So if we were to scale this out, I'd put the crossover here about 330 hours. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is now that we know what the answer is and our model could, is, uh, we have a good idea of, that our model will work properly, how will we implement this in Python? So first of all, we're going to set all the constants. Then we want to sit in a while loop and increment the hours and then calculate the infections for Italy and China. T divided by 24 is the exponent. And then break when Italy is greater than China. Now, we want to say when the, the infection rates for Italy are greater than or equal to China, probably. If we just did, if we just did equal, Italy equals China, and I wrote the conditional double equal sign here, like you would in Python, these would have to be exactly the same before we set a break. So we want to make sure the first moment the calculation is above, for Italy is above China, that we use a, the greater than equal sign to then break our code. So this is an important point. And then finally, we want to print the outputs and plot the graphs and make sure that we use hours because that was what was asked for in the assignment. Okay, so that's an overview about how to think about this infection rate model. And uh, I hope that helps you in your assignment. Uh, until next time, thanks.